we can continue on in Romans chapter 1. Today it might be a little more graphic than some people like, but, but I'll try to keep it PG. Uh, we'll, I don't think we do the Word of God in any service if this is the stuff we're not as comfortable with. Right. But Romans chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, we'll look at over one today. Amen. After here, Paul had described the wickedness of man, or especially their idolatry, he goes on to say, For this cause God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of the error which was beat. Hmm. You know, Paul began by saying for this call, or because of the wickedness he's described in the previous verses, how the man has left off God and has worshipped mm -hmm. other things or tried to make God like unto man and creation. The next step, he says he's given them up to, in verse 24, he gave them up to the uncleanness. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 25, that they they change the truth of God to a lie and worship and serve the creature, or the creature could be any of creation, man or nature. Or, right. And he goes on in verse 26, the next step was that he gave them up to the vile affections. Mm -hmm. You know, this, that God gave them up doesn't necessarily mean that God had purposely turned them to this, but more that he had. Moved, removed his hand more and more. That's it. Amen. The man is fully set to do wickedness, and it's really the only thing that holds him back is the restraining hand of God. You're right. Sometimes I don't know if we realize just how much evil is restrained by the hand of God. Mm -hmm. If he were to completely remove himself from this world, then man would just go fully in the all sorts of wickedness. You're right. Yeah. Well, Hitler and the Nazis would look like nothing compared to. You're right. You're right. Man left completely to himself. Mm -hmm. Yet, as man pro progresses more in his wickedness, God just removes himself a little more and a little more. Amen. We end up with this group here. We have in verse 26. They said they gave them up to vile affections. <laughs> Dishonorable, disgraceful, shameful feelings and emotions and passions. Some well, people want to talk about their feelings today. Mm -hmm. Man's feelings are vile, aren't they? They're You're right. They're corrupt. So yeah. feelings and emotions are only going to drive one to sin. They're not ever going to drive one closer to God. You're right. That's one reason why any emotional experience is not the same as salvation. I'm not saying that emotions can't be involved or that we should be emotionless, but the natural heart, the natural seed of those emotions and passions are only going to lead us into corruption. Yet God gives a new heart, he says. Amen. And he will expound upon with these vital affections are going on he goes on to say for even their women yeah we can be sure when the women of society have given themselves a wickedness that that society's days are numbered you bet not that women are any more godly necessarily than men are or uh, less corrupt but yet it seems to be the nature of the woman to be more faithful to the right. man. Amen. So when you see even the women of the society going full head into wickedness, you can be sure that society has completely forgotten God. Mm -hmm. Which seems to be our case in America today. On a side note, we don't need to judge the whole of Christianity just by American Christianity. You're right. So, well, there's mention those in Guyana, uh, there's those in the Philippines, even more so those in China who are 
yet faithfully serving God. Amen. And they're not like the average American Christian. Well, there's those in China that are persecuted and even killed for their faith. Mm -hmm. North Korea is even more so. Right. So yes, American Christianity as a whole is pretty pathetic, but yet there still are those faithful servants of God throughout the world. Mm -hmm. Anyway, going back to our, our text here, he says, even their women to change the natural use into that which is against nature. Mm -hmm. The natural use, this word specifically indicates in a sexual way. Yeah. Well, let's go back to Genesis and consider what, for what purpose woman was created. Mm -hmm. Genesis, we'll start in chapter 1. We'll look at chapters 1, 2, and 3, a few verses in each. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 28, we kind of get a, a brief overview of the creation of man and woman. It says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created him, male and female created he them. Notice he only made two genders. Verse 28 says, And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that hath, that moveth upon the earth. Well, here was a, the natural purpose of man and woman was to, it says, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish, mm -hmm. and fill up the earth, you subdue bet. it, and have dominion over it. So man was to be predominant over God's creation. Amen. Well, we know sin has corrupted that, but really the purpose and plan of God in Eden was for them to be fruitful and multiply and have dominion, he says. Yeah. We go on to chapter 2, we get some more details, and again in verse 18, we'll read through verse 24. After God had created man, and man was there in the garden, he says, and, God, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make and him and help me for him. That's one that is fit to be his help. Going on verse 19, it says, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was a the name there. Though. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to the every beast of the field, but for Adam there was not found to help eat for him. Well, I don't think God was saying, well, I'm going to make these animals and they should be good enough. God already knew what his purpose and plan was, but Amen. I think he does this to show really that that moment is special for the man. Mm -hmm. but she's not as the animals are or the rest of creation, but she was created specifically with a purpose in mind. Going on to verse 21, it says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now a bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Amen. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll, we need much, too much imagination to know what Adam was saying there in verse 24, that they shall be one flesh. But if that was the purpose of creating a woman, to, be, to help meet for man, Amen. and for them to become one flesh and then to multiply and be fruitful. Amen. Now we'll see in chapter 3 that was corrupted by the fall. Verse 16 in particular, here it says, after they had been confronted for their sin, God pronouncing now the, the curse 
upon each of these. And it says, Unto the woman, he, as God said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Amen. We see that great pain would come with childbirth. Mm -hmm. So, ladies, y'all can thank God and Eve for that. Right. If the world had stayed in a state of perfection, there wouldn't have been any pain in that. I don't know how that would have worked, but yet God knows. Mm -hmm. And he says, I desire shall be the husband, and he shall rule over these. So the man was to be the head of the, the house, if you will, the, the leader of his family. That was what was set forth after the fall. Amen. And of course, we know Adam was to work by the sweat of his brow, and the thorns and thistles come up because of that, but yet the natural use of the woman in the way Paul is speaking of here was that man would be with his wife and they would be fruitful and multiply. Amen. Now we're not saying that women are just to be baby mills. Right. There might be some that think that, but that's not what the scriptures are saying. Right. But yet when a woman has really no desire whatsoever for children, she's left the natural use of the woman. Amen. You're right. I know children can be a pain. Sometimes we question why we have them. But <laughs> yet, that's just another part of the corrupt nature of man. Yet here, going back to our text, it says the woman did leave that natural use, that which is against nature. Mm -hmm. well, certainly what the world calls lesbianism is one aspect of it. But I think even more so abortion is mm -hmm. Amen. the fulfillment of that. It's not natural for a woman to want to kill her children. You're right. Yeah. It's not natural for her not to want to nurture and care for that child. Going, going back to the, the childbirth aspect, you can, it's only a woman desires to give childbirth. Mm -hmm. You can be sure if it was left to man, we, we would have died out a long time ago, right? <laughs> so I, I don't think any of us that have children to say that we don't like them, don't love them, but yet I doubt any of us would go through that more than one time. Right. That's just not how man was made. Yet, that is the nature of a woman. Mm -hmm. Amen. So God created man for his purpose and woman for her purpose. And it might not be popular teaching, but men and women are different by nature. You are. Amen. Certainly no, not one is greater or less than the other, but yet each has their own role in the family and in society. He says here that they had left their natural use, and they had changed it into that which is against nature. You no, know, man is by nature dishonors law, God's law, and breaks the commands of God. But it really into a whole other level when he's doing even that which is against nature. Amen. So when even the woman has left that which is against nature, and you can be sure that society is doomed. Now he doesn't leave the men off here. We'll go on to verse 27 and look at them now. He says, and likewise also the men, just as the woman had turned from the natural order of things, he says, so did the men. He says, leaving the natural use of the woman, he was once again turning away from the woman sexually he says they burned in their lust one toward another mm -hmm. so they were so consumed by this unnatural desire one for another i think that's one reason why we see such a push by these groups because mm -hmm. their sin has just completely consumed really their entire life and being you might you're right i mean literally that's they want to be identified by what they what their sexual orientation is. And if you get it wrong, you'll upset them. 
Right. Because they have been completely consumed by their sin. He says, men with men, working that which is unseemly. That is, so that implies that they're indecent and naked, that which is unseemly. So this is certainly the sin of sodomy. Right. We can turn back to Genesis 19. I'm sure we're all familiar with this particular account. But Genesis 19, and we see the, the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah on display. Mm -hmm. We'll go ahead and read the first nine verses here. It says, And there came two angels, which arguably could be two parts of the God head in a fleshly form. And there came two angels of Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and carry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. Lot wanted to get them in there, keep them safe, and get them out of there as quick as he could. Right. Lot might have had some things wrong in his life, but he wasn't dumb spiritually. Right. He goes on, last part of verse 2, and says, And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he made them <coughs> feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, passed the house around both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And here we see they were so consumed in their sin that all came up against Right. Adam, I mean, excuse me, Lot and his household. Verse 5 says, And they called him Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee to up this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't want to get to know them like friends. Right. But he wanted to know them and, like a man knows his wife. Exactly. See, they were so consumed by this that they, even a stranger passing by, they wanted to gobble up in their sin. Right. Amen. <clears throat> is that not the way in our society it is today? Mm -hmm. Well, it can't be that you can just leave them alone in their sin. No, they want you to accept and even participate in their sin. Mm -hmm. Going on, he says, and Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. You can see their, their intent was not to be friendly with these men. Right. These two angels, as they're called. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and you do unto them as it is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore they... Or there, excuse me, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. The law might not have been the best father there was in the world. Right. We see he offers them as two daughters. And that wasn't enough for the men of Sodom. Verse 9 says, And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came into sojourn, and he will need to be a judge. Now we will do worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, and even Lot, and came near to break the door. See, they were so so determined to take these right. in their sin, and they were going to break down the door and just take them by force. You know the rest of the story, the, the two men, or two angels, whichever you want to refer to them, they were, it says they smote them with blindness, and was the men of Sodom, and Brought Lot in safe and told Lot to get out of there as quick as he can. Amen. And of course, God rained down fire and brimstone once Lot was out of that city. We turn over to Jude. Jude gives a, a quick look into this sin as well. A little book of Jude, verse number seven. And he is describing. The whole book of Jude is about ungodliness. He begins by telling us that we need to contend for the faith and 
These are examples of wickedness throughout the scriptures. In verse 7, he says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. And some people try to explain Sodom and Gomorrah in ways having other sins, or that it wasn't what we call homosexuality today, but Jude seems pretty plain when he says, Amen. It was fornication and going after strange flesh. It, it always starts with fornication, and that yep. becomes normal and accepted and even expected. And then it slowly always progresses, and we end up with this. After, as Jude says, they're going after strange flesh. And he even said that they are an example of suffering vengeance of eternal fire. Mm -hmm. If you're familiar with where Sodom and Gomorrah is, it's underneath the Dead Sea now. Nothing lives there anymore. Amen. Well, I'm not saying that one sin is necessarily worse than any other, but yet. Sometimes God does deal more harshly with some sins than other sins. Let's go back to our text in Romans 1, verse 27. We'll wrap it up here. After he says the men with men, he says and then that they are receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meat. Mm -hmm. That they received the, the just reward or compensation for their sin. We don't, we don't say reward and compensation in a good way. They received what was due to them because of their sin. Right. And we see that practically in the many diseases and conditions that come along with those sins. Exactly. Amen. I'll just give you a, a few stats from the CDC says that themselves that gay and bisexual men are at higher risk to suffer from major depression, bipolar disorder, and anxiety, as well as to use illegal drugs and commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Another health website says that they're also 25 times, that's 2400% by the way, more likely to contact, contract HIV. Mm -hmm. That's not even considering all the other diseases that they're prone to. Right. But that's exactly how sin works, isn't it? That that's right. It corrupts you, it afflicts you, and eventually <clears throat> kills you. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not going to say that these people are outside of the reach of God's grace, like some men may teach, but yet it is just another step in the downward spiral of man. Amen. And from my understanding of the scriptures, and from the examples we have, it seems that that's the last step before God destroys that particular society. Mm -hmm. Amen. I think one day, we know one day he's going to destroy this world, much as he did with Sodom and Gomorrah. Burns it with fire. But these sins which are mentioned here, they are described as that which is against nature. Yeah? They don't even follow the natural order of things. Amen. And I don't think you can get any any farther from God than such a case as that. That's right. But next week, Lord willing, we'll look at verse 28 and we'll talk about the reprobates. I don't I think sometimes we misuse that term. Mm -hmm. but, says that God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Yet Paul himself describes himself as reprobate as the seed. Mm -hmm. Then from there on the rest of the chapter, Paul talks about the depravity of man, particular sins that man commits. We'll try to examine those and we'll finish up the chapter, first chapter of Romans in the next week or two. Amen. We'll close with that.